When it comes to big name bloodsuckers, there's no question that Dracula is always going to get top billing. Neck and neck with Sherlock Holmes as the single most adapted literary character in history, Dracula's legacy has permeated film, TV, stage, comics, and beyond to earn the count the title of pop culture's quintessential vampire. But did you know that a number of the tropes associated with Dracula actually began with another blue-blooded creature of the night? A countess who not only helped lay the foundation for vampire stories we know today, but also became a significant figure in queer history in the process. Greetings and welcome to the History of Fright. I'm your host, Michael. Michael Verratti, and this week is all about the lady who helped give modern vampires their teeth. I'm speaking, of course, about Carmilla Karnstein, a vampire who proved sisters were doing it for themselves long before a drac came along. And if you aren't familiar with Carmilla, well, hold tight, because you're about to get a history lesson soaked in blood and wrapped in lust. Honestly, my favorite kind. Carmilla Karnstein, sometimes referred to by the alias Mercalla, was created by Irish novelist Sheridan Le Fanu. A tale of gothic horror, Carmilla is told from the perspective of a young woman who is being preyed upon by a female vampire. Published nearly 26 Six years before Bram Stoker would write Dracula, Le Fanu's tale of sapphic desire and otherworldly murder helped inspire Stoker's work by creating the framework for modern literary vampirism. The novel that would become Dracula began as a short story titled Dracula's Guest, and Stoker, inspired by Le Fanu's gothic framework, paid homage to Carmilla by giving direct winks and nods in his own work. Elements of Countess Karnstein's powers, such as her ability to transform into creatures of the night and hold victims in her sway, would later be utilized and expanded upon by Stoker in Dracula's creation, and from there became part of what we consider the rules of the traditional pop culture infused vampire. However, more than just supernatural abilities in common, the seductive and dreamlike nature of Dracula's claiming of his victims shares a lot with Carmilla's own style of preying on the innocent. And, as noted, both of them have a penchant for beautiful ladies. While sexually fluid vampires seem relatively par for course in a post Anne Rice world, the fact that Carmilla, written in 1871, hinged around lesbian themes was positively groundbreaking. Carmilla's slow seduction of innocent maidens served as one of the first popular culture intersections of the queer experience in the horror genre. Yet, it instantly made sense. For a genre that so often deals with the notion of otherness, the analogous representation of horror has allowed many LGBTQ plus people to find catharsis within its stories. There has long been academic discussion about the queer attraction to horror, and no discussion is complete without Carmilla's undeniable influence in bringing those themes to the general public. Of course, as cultural attitudes change, so do perspectives and interpretations. There are those who would assert that Carmilla's predatory nature is a condemnation of lesbianism in an era when that lifestyle was frowned upon, and perhaps that's true. However, even if that's the case, La Fanu's presentation of the character's allure was so well executed that readers couldn't help but finding themselves seduced. And with just cause. No one had really seen a character like Carmilla before, whose sensuality was as key to her presentation as her savagery. Rather than shun what she represented, people were drawn to it, and a cultural obsession followed. Much like Dracula, Carmilla has had her fair share of adaptations over the last century or so. One of the earliest, Carl Dreyer's Vampire, released in 1932, attempted to purge the story of its homosexual elements. And while a significant entry in the horror canon, it wasn't until cinema allowed Carmilla to live her authentic life that the character really took hold with modern audiences. In 1960, acclaimed auteur Roger Vadim, director of Barbarella, released Blood and Roses, an adaptation that fully embraced the story's erotic roots and would go on to be considered one of the vampire subgenre's most celebrated entries. Hammer would also faithfully adapt to the novella in 1970 with The Vampire Lovers and subsequently follow with two more entries, Lust for a Vampire and Twins of Evil, which expanded the lore of the Karnstein clan. However, more than just mere translations of La Fanu's story, Carmilla's tale of sexual fluidity would inspire more modern translations that took the material into new territory. Mary Heron, director of American Psycho, touched upon the subject matter with The Moth Diaries, and 2014's The Unwanted took the story and transplanted it into the American South. Most recently, Carmilla found new life as a popular web series and spin-off movie that not only reimagined the vampire as a hero, but also finally allowed her to have a positive and healthy relationship. And, in addition to providing amazing representation for the lesbian community, this new iteration of the story showcased non binary characters, which means Carmilla has continued to advance the cause of queer representation and genre nearly two centuries after the story was committed to Paige. A groundbreaking pioneer amongst a pantheon of classic monsters, Carmilla not only helped inform what modern vampire stories would become, but also, by virtue of representing a community that was not very visible in the zeitgeist at the time, showed that genre had the power to speak to issues beyond what merely seemed surface. A loud, proud, and powerful part of horror history, Carmilla's direct influence not only helped make Dracula the undead man he is today, but also fully displayed how horror can be used as a social commentary or lens by which we may access other perspectives. And if you ignore for a moment her penchant for blood, Carmilla's very existence is sort of inspiring. She's a queer feminist in a male-dominated society doing things unapologetically her way. I don't know about you, but that's exactly the kind of character I want to see more of this Halloween, and always. So, for her undeniable influence on modern vampire lore, as well as her visibility as one of horror's first openly queer characters, Carmilla has a special place in our hearts and will always make our blood just a little bit warmer. This Halloween season, try and take a cue from the Countess Karnstein and live out loud. Just be home before sunlight. Until next time. 
Hey everyone, thanks for watching History of Fright. For more horror content, go visit our friends at Dread Central, and don't forget to follow Gamma Ray across the web.